All right, guys, how's it going? In this video, I want to talk about compressing a live acoustic. So, like we talked about in our EQ video, a live acoustic guitar a lot of times needs to hang around uh, the same kind of sonic range as like a tambourine or a shaker or hi hat or something like that. It needs to be more percussive than harmonic. So, a big part of that is controlling transients. So I want to talk about how I would do that in this context. So let's take a quick listen to it again, and we'll uh, talk about how we would do this. So the first thing I'm hearing is just inconsistency, especially in the body of the acoustic. You know, whenever um, it, it digs in a little bit more, a lot more kind of low mids and lows come out of it. Um, you know, we've EQ'd some of that out, but, you know, you can only do so much whenever there's a lot of uh, sonic movement happening on it. So we have to deal with it with a compressor. In this case, you know, in my opinion, if we're not using something like a multiband compressor, I think that this is a good way here to start controlling more things with it. So the first thing I'm hearing is we need a quicker attack time to handle some of those uh, initial transients that come through. So let's kick this compressor on and we'll uh, see what this sounds like. So what I'm hearing there is uh, we need to have a, uh, not a extreme ratio by any means. I would think, you know, f uh, four is good for that. It's going to knock off enough, uh, you know, enough off the top of it that it will begin to even out the signal a little bit more. Now, I think the most important on here is the attack time because that's where we can really start squashing things down. So real quick, I've landed on a 10 millisecond attack time. I'll just squash it all the way down just so you can hear it at zero. Now back up to 10 slowly. So it's still quick, and it's still um, a lot taking off the front end, but I feel like a 10 millisecond attack time here uh, is doing enough that it's uh, leveling off the front end of the signal, if that makes sense. And as far as the release goes, I, I, I don't really worry about the hold on here. It's a 10 milliseconds. I didn't really th think about it. So I really only focused on the attack and release. So the release I've landed at 124 milliseconds. Uh, we can mess around with that real quick just to see what it sounds like faster and slower. So when it's all the way down and, and much faster, I feel like the acoustic is way too aggressive. It starts jumping back in your face. It's just kind of uh, aggressive is the word for it to me. And whenever I really crank up the release a lot farther, it's um, you know it's it's too much. It's not not necessarily sounding choked, but it doesn't sound um, natural to me. And to me, having the attack and release in these spots work well with the signal we're getting. Um, these aren't settings I'm going to tell you to go and use, but to me, with the pick hitting the strings and then those notes ringing out and letting off as, as the strumming is happening, I feel like these two, um, a 10 millisecond attack and a release at 116, 120 milliseconds kind of works with the signal and helps it be really smooth. So, real quick, we can hear it in context of the whole mix.
All right, and as usual, hit the link in the description for the free reverb cheat sheet, and I'll see you guys in the next one.